Session 17, February 3rd, 1981. I am Ra, I greet you in the love and in the light of the infinite creator. Before we communicate by answer, we shall correct an error which we have discovered in the transmission of our information to you. We have difficulty dealing with your time-space. There may again be errors of this type. Feel free to question us that we may recalculate in your time-space measurements. The error we have discovered concerns one of the arrivals of both the Orion group into your planetary sphere of influence and the corresponding arrival of emissaries of the Confederation. We gave dates of 2,600 years for the Orion entity, 2,300 for Confederation entry. This is incorrect. The recalculation indicates numbers 3,600 for Orion entry, 3,300 for Confederation entry. We communicate now. Question. Thank you very much. I would like to say again that we consider it a great honor, privilege, and duty to be able to do this particular work. I would like to reiterate that some of my questions may seem irrelevant at times, but I am trying to ask them in a manner so as to gain a foothold into the application of the Law of One. We are now in the fourth density. Will the effects of the fourth density increase in the next 30 years? Will we see more changes in our environment and our effect upon our environment? Ra. The fourth density is a vibrational spectrum. Your time-space continuum has spiraled in your planetary sphere and your, what we would call galaxy, what you call star, into this vibration. This will cause the planetary sphere itself to electromagnetically realign its vortices of reception of the in-streaming of cosmic forces expressing themselves as vibrational webs so that the Earth thus be fourth density magnetized, as you may call it. This is going to occur with some inconvenience, as we have said before, due to the energies of the thought forms of your people which disturb the orderly constructs of energy patterns within your earth spirals of energy, which increases entropy and unusable heat. This will cause your planetary sphere to have some ruptures in its outer garment while making itself appropriately magnetized for fourth density. This is the planetary adjustment. You will find a sharp increase in the number of people, as you call mind-body-spirit complexes, whose vibrational potentials include the potential for fourth vibrational distortions. Thus, there will seem to be, shall we say, a new breed. These are those incarnating for fourth density work. There will also be a sharp increase in the short run of negatively oriented or polarized mind-body-spirit complexes and social complexes, due to the polarizing conditions of the sharp delineation between fourth density characteristics and third density self-service orientation. Those who remain in fourth density upon this plane will be of the so-called positive orientation. Many will come from elsewhere, for it would appear that with all the best efforts of the Confederation, which includes those from your people's inner planes, inner civilizations, and those from other dimensions, the harvest will still be much less than this planetary sphere is capable of comfortably supporting in service. Question. Is it possible by the use of some technique or other to help an entity to reach fourth density level in these last days? Ra. It is impossible to help another being directly. It is only possible to make catalyst available in whatever form. The most important being the radiation of realization of oneness with the Creator from the self less important being information such as we share with you. We ourselves do not feel an urgency for this information to be widely disseminated. It is enough that we have made it available to three, four, or five. This is extremely ample reward, for if one of these obtains fourth density understanding due to this catalyst, then we shall have fulfilled the law of one in the distortion of service. We encourage a dispassionate attempt to share information without concern for numbers or quick growth among others. That you attempt to make this information available is, in your term, your service. The attempt, if it reaches one, reaches all. We cannot offer shortcuts to enlightenment. Enlightenment is, of the moment, an opening to intelligent infinity. It can only be accomplished by the self for the self. Another self cannot teach, learn, enlightenment but only teach, learn information, inspiration, or a sharing of love, of mystery, of the unknown that makes the other self reach out and begin the seeking process that ends in a moment. But who can know when an entity will open the gate to the present? Question. Thank you. 
Can you tell me who was the entity before this incarnation on earth, known as Jesus of Nazareth? Ra, I have difficulty with this question as it is phrased. Can you discover another form for this query? Question. What I meant to say was, can you tell me if Jesus of Nazareth came from the Confederation before incarnation here? Ra, the one known to you as Jesus of Nazareth did not have a name. This entity was a member of fifth density of the highest level of that sub-octave. This entity was desirous of entering this planetary sphere in order to share the love vibration in as pure a manner as possible. Thus, this entity received permission to perform this mission. This entity was then a wanderer of no name, of confederation origin, of fifth density, representing the fifth density understanding of the vibration of the understanding or love. Question. Did you say the fifth vibration was that of love? Ra, I have made an error. The fourth density being is that which we intended to say, the highest level of fourth density going into the fifth. This entity could have gone on to the fifth, but chose instead to return to third for this particular mission. This entity was of the highest sub-octave of the vibration of love. This is fourth density. Question. When I am communicating with you as Ra, are you at times individualized as an entity, or am I speaking to an entire social memory complex? Ra, you speak with Ra, there is no separation. You would call it social memory complex, thus indicating many-ness. To our understanding, you are speaking to an individualized portion of consciousness. Question, am I always speaking to the same individualized portion? portion of consciousness in each of the sessions. Ra, you speak to the same entity through a channel or instrument. This instrument is at times lower in vital energy. This will sometimes hamper our proceeding. However, this instrument has a great deal of faithfulness to the task and gives whatever it has to this task. Therefore, we may continue even when energy is low. This is why we usually speak to the ending of the session due to our estimation of the instrument's level of vital energy. Question. I would like to make a point clear now that I am sure of myself. The people of this planet, following any religion or no religion at all, or having no intellectual knowledge of at all of the law of one, can still be harvested into the fourth density if they are of that vibration. Is that not correct? Ra, this is correct. However, you will find few who are harvestable, whose radiance does not cause others to be aware of their, what you may call, spirituality, the quality of the mind-body-spirit complex distortion. Thus, it is not particularly probable that an entity would be completely unknown to this immediate acquaintances as an unusually radiant personality, even were this individual not caught up in any of the distortions of your so-called religious systems. Question. When Jesus of Nazareth incarnated, was there an attempt by the Orion group to discredit him in some way? Ra, this is correct. Question, can you tell me what the Orion group did in order to try to cause his downfall? Ra, we may describe in general what occurred. The technique was that of building upon other negatively oriented information. This information had been given by the one whom your people call Yawa. This information involved many strictures upon behavior and promised power of the third density, service to self-nature. These two types of distortions were impressed upon those already oriented to think those thought forms. This eventually led to many challenges of the entity known as Jesus. It eventually led to one sound vibration complex Judas, as you call this entity, who believed that it was done the appropriate thing in bringing about or forcing upon the one you call Jesus, the necessity for bringing in the third density planetary power distortion of the third density rule over others. This entity, Judas, felt that, if pushed into a corner, the entity you call Jesus would then be able to see the wisdom of using the power of intelligent infinity in order to rule others. The one you called Judas was mistaken in his estimation of the reaction of the entity Jesus, whose teach learning was not oriented towards this distortion. This resulted in the destruction of a bodily complex of the one known as Jesus. Question. Then if the entity Jesus was fourth density, 
and there are wanderers on the planet today who came from fifth and sixth density. What was it that Jesus did that enabled him to be such a good healer, and could these fifth and sixth density beings here now do the same? Ra, those who heal may be of any density which has the consciousness of the Spirit. This includes third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. The third density can be one in which healing takes place, just as the other. However, there is more illusory material to understand, to balance, to accept, and to move forward from. The gate to intelligent infinity can only be opened when an understanding of the in-streaming of intelligent energy are opened unto the healer. These are the so-called natural laws of your so local space-time continuum, and its web of electromagnetic source, or nexi, of the in-streaming energy. Know then first the mind and the body, then as the spirit is integrated and synthesized. These are harmonized into a mind-body-spirit complex, which can move among the dimensions and can open the gateway to intelligent infinity, thus healing self by light and sharing that light with others. True healing is simply the radiance of the self causing an environment in which a catalyst may occur, which initiates the recognition of self, by self, of the self-healing properties of the self. Question. How did Jesus learn this during his incarnation? Ra. This entity learned the ability by a natural kind of remembering at a very young age. Unfortunately, this entity first discovered his ability to penetrate intelligent infinity by becoming the distortion you call angry at a playmate. This entity was touched by the entity known as Jesus and was fatally wounded. Thus, the one known as Jesus became aware that there dwelt in him a terrible potential. This entity determined to discover how to use this energy for the good, not for the negative. This entity was extremely positively polarized and remembered more than most wanderers do. Question. How did this aggressive action against a playmate affect Jesus in his spiritual growth? Where did he go after his physical death? Ra. The entity you call Jesus was galvanized by this experience and began a lifetime of seeking and searching. This entity studied first day and night in its own religious constructs, which you call Judaism, and was learned enough to be a rabbi, as you call teach learners of this particular rhythm or distortion of understanding, at a very young age. At the age of approximately thirteen and one half of your years, this entity left the dwelling place of its earthly family, as you would call it, and walked into many other places seeking further information. This went on sporadically until the entity was approximately twenty-five, at which time it returned to its family dwelling, and learned and practiced the art of its earthly father. When the entity had become able to integrate or synthesize all experiences, the entity began to speak to other selves and teach, learn, what it had felt during the preceding years to be of a worthwhile nature. The entity was absolved karmically of the destruction of an other self when it was in the last portion of lifetime, and spoke upon what you would call a cross, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In forgiveness lies the stoppage of the wheel of action, or what you call karma. Question. What density is the entity known as Jesus in now? Ra. This information is harmless, though unimportant. This entity studies now the lessons of the wisdom vibration, the fifth density, also called a light vibration. Question. In our culture there is a saying that he will return. Can you tell me if this is planned? Ra. I will attempt to sort out this question. It is difficult. This entity became aware that it was not an entity of itself but operated as a messenger of the one creator whom this entity saw as love. This entity was aware that this cycle was in its last portion, and spoke to the effect that those of this consciousness would return at the harvest. The particular mind-body-spirit complex you call Jesus is, as we would call an entity, not to return except as a member of the Confederation, speaking through a channel. However, there are others of the identical congruency of consciousness that will welcome those to the fourth dimension. This is the meaning of the returning. Question. Can you tell me why you say that the earth will be fourth density positive instead of fourth density negative, since there seems to be much negativity here now? Ra. 
The earth seems to be negative. That is due to the quiet, shall we say, horror, which is the common distortions which these good or positively oriented entities have toward the occurrences which are of your time-space present. However, those oriented and harvestable in the ways of service to others greatly outnumber those whose orientation towards service to self has become that of harvestable quality. Question. In other words, there will be fewer negative entities than positive entities harvested in the fourth density. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. The great majority of your peoples will repeat third density. Question. How did Taurus Bulba, Genghis Khan, and Rasputin get harvested prior to the harvest? Ra, it is the right, privileged duty of those opening consciously the gate to intelligent infinity to choose the manner of their leaving of third density. Those of negative orientation who so achieve this right duty most often choose to move forward in their learned teachings of service to self. Question. Am I to understand that the harvest is to occur in the year 2011, or will it be spread out? Ra, this is an approximation. We have stated we have difficulty with your time-space. This is an appropriate, probable, possible time-space nexus for harvest. Those who are not in incarnation at this time will be included in the harvest. Question. If an entity wants to be of service to others rather than service to self while he is in his third density, are there best ways of being of service to others, or is any way just as good as any other way? Ra. The best way to be of service to others has been explicitly covered in previous material. We will iterate briefly. The best way of serving of others is the constant attempt to seek to share the love of the Creator as it is known to the inner self. This involves self-knowledge and the ability to open the self to the other self without hesitation. This involves, shall we say, radiating that which is the essence or the heart of the mind-body-spirit complex. Speaking to the intention of your question, the best way for each seeker in third density to be of service to others is unique to that mind-body-spirit complex. This means that the mind-body-spirit complex must then seek within itself the intelligence of its own discernment as to the way it may best serve other selves. This will be different for each. There is no best. There is no generalization. Nothing is known. Question. I don't wish to take up extra time asking questions over again. Some areas I consider important enough in relation to the law of one to ask questions in a different way in order to get another perspective in the answer. In the book Ohopsi, it states that if an entity goes over 51% service to others and is less than 50% service to self, then that entity is harvestable. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct if the harvesting is to be for the positive fourth dimensional level. Question. What is to be the entity's percentage if he is to be harvested for the negative? Ra. The entity who wishes to pursue the path of service to self must attain a grade of five. That is five percent service to others. Ninety-five percent service to self. It must approach totality. The negative path is quite difficult to attain harvestability upon and requires great dedication. Question. Why is the negative path so much more difficult to attain harvestability upon than the positive? Ra. This is due to the distortion of the law of one, which indicates that the gateway to intelligent infinity be a gateway at the end of a straight and narrow path, as you may call it. To attain 51% dedication to the welfare of other selves is as difficult as attaining a grade of 5% dedication to other selves. The, shall we say, sinkhole of indifference is between these two. Question. Then if an entity is harvested into the fourth density with a grade of 51% for others and 49% for self, what level of the fourth density would he go into? I am assuming that there are different levels of the fourth density. Ra, this is correct. Each enters the sub-density, which vibrates in accordance with the entity's understanding. Question. How many levels do we have here in the third density at this time? Ra, the third density has an infinite number of levels. 
question. I've heard that there are seven astral and seven devakonic levels. Is this correct? Ra, you speak of some of the more large distinctions and levels in your inner plane. That is correct. Question. Who inhabits the astral and devakonic planes? Ra, entities inhabit the various planes due to their vibration nature. The astral plane varies from thought forms in the lower extremities to enlightened beings who become dedicated to teach learning in the higher astral plane. In the devakonic planes, as you call them, are those whose vibrations are even more close to the primal distortions of love light. Beyond these planes, there are others. Question. Are there seven subplanes to what we call our physical plane here? Ra, you are correct. This is difficult to understand. There are an infinite number of planes. In your particular space time continuum distortion, there are seven subplanes of mind body spirit complexes. You will discover the vibrational nature of these seven planes as you pass through your experiential distortions, meeting other selves of the various levels, which correspond to the energy influx centers of the physical vehicle. The invisible or inner third density planes are inhabited by those who are not of body complex nature such as yours. That is, they do not collect about their spirit mind complex as a chemical body. Nevertheless, these entities are divided into what you may call an artificial dream within a dream into various levels. In the upper levels, desire to communicate knowledge back down to the outer planes of existence become less due to the intensive learned teaching which occur upon these levels. Question. Is it necessary to penetrate one level at a time as we move through these planes? Ra. It has been our experience that some pen penetrate several planes at one time. Others penetrate them slowly. Some in eagerness attempt to penetrate the higher planes before penetrating the energies of the so-called more fundamental planes. And this causes energy imbalance. You will find ill health, as you call this distortion, to frequently be the result of a subtle mismatch of energies in which some of the higher energy levels are being activated by the conscious attempts of the entity while the entity has not penetrated the lower energy centers or sub-densities of this density. Question. Is there a best way to meditate? Ra. No. Question. At this time, near the end of the cycle, how are reincarnations into the physical allotted, shall we say, on this planet? Ra, entities wishing to obtain critically needed experience in order to become harvestable are incarnated with priority over those who will, without too much probable, possible doubt, need to re-experience this density. Question. How long has this type of allocation been going on? Ra, this has been going on since the first individual entity became conscious of its need to learn the lessons of this density. This was the beginning of what you call a seniority by vibration. Question. Can you explain what you mean by a seniority by vibration? Ra. This will be the final question of this session of working. The seniority by vibration is the preferential treatment, shall we say, which follows the ways of the law of one, which encourages harvestable individuals, each individual becoming aware of the time of harvest and the need on a self-level to bend mind-body-spirit towards the learned teaching of these lessons, by giving them priority in order that an entity may have the best possible chance, shall we say, in succeeding in this attempt. May we ask at this time if there are any brief questions? Question. My only question is what we can do to make the instrument more comfortable. Ra. This instrument is not wearing the appropriate apparel for this work. An inpouring occur in the regions of the, what you may call, seventh chakra, as you speak of this energy center, filtering through the sixth and so forth. The entity's other or base chakras become somewhat de-energized. Thus, this entity should be more careful in its selection of warm apparel for the part of the body complex you call the feet. May we answer any other brief questions? Question. Then we want to put heavier clothing on the feet. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. I will leave this instrument now. I leave you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator, Adonai. Session 18, February 4th, 1981.
Ra, I greet you in love and light of the infinite creator. We communicate now. Question. I was thinking last night that if I were in the place of Ra right now, the first distortion of the law of one might cause me to make some erroneous data with the true information that I was transmitting to this group. Do you do this? Ra, we do not intentionally do this. However, there will be confusion. It is not our intent in this particular project to create erroneous information, but to express in this confining ambience of your language system the feeling of the infinite mystery of the one creation in its infinite and intelligent unity. Question. Thank you. I have a question here that I will read. Much of the mystic tradition of seeking on earth holds the belief that the individual self must be erased or obliterated and the material world ignored for the individual to reach nirvana, as it is called, or enlightenment. What is the proper role of the individual self and its worldly activities to aid an individual to grow more into law one? Ra. The proper role of the entity is in the density to experience all things desired, to then analyze, understand, and accept these experiences, distilling from them the love light within them. Nothing shall be overcome. That which is not needed falls away. The orientation develops due to analysis of desire. These desires become more and more distorted towards conscious application of love light as the entity furnishes itself with distilled experience. We have found it to be inappropriate in the extreme to encourage the overcoming of any desires except to suggest the imagination rather than the carrying out in the physical plane, as you call it, of these desires not consonant with the law of one thus preserving the primal distortion of free will. The reason it is unwise to overcome is that overcoming is an unbalanced action, creating difficulties in balancing in the time-space continuum. Overcoming thus creates the further environment for holding on to that which apparently has been overcome. All things are acceptable in the proper time for each entity and in experiencing, in understanding, in accepting, and then sharing with other selves, the appropriate distortion shall be moving away from distortions of one kind to distortions of another, which may be more consonant with the law of one. It is, shall we say, a shortcut to simply ignore or overcome any desire. It must instead be understood and accepted. This takes patience and experience which can be analyzed with care, with compassion for self and for other self. Question. Basically, I would say that to infringe upon the free will of another entity would be the basic thing never to do under the law of one. Can you state any other breaking of the law of one than this basic rule? Ra, as one proceeds from the primal distortion of free will, one proceeds to the understanding of the focal points of intelligent energy which have created the intelligences or the ways of a particular mind-body-spirit complex in its environment, both what you would call natural and what you would call man-made. Thus, the distortions to be avoided are those which do not take into consideration the distortions of the focus of energy of love light, or shall we say, the logos of this particular sphere or density. These include the lack of understanding of the needs of the natural environment, the needs of other selves, mind, body, spirit complexes. These are mainly due to the various distortions of man-made complexes, in which the intelligence and awareness of entities themselves have chosen a way of using the energies available. Thus, what would be an improper distortion with one entity is proper with another. We can suggest an attempt to become aware of the other self as self, and thus do that action which is needed by other self. Understanding from the other self's intelligence and awareness in many cases, this does not involve the breaking of the distortion of free will into a distortion or fragmentation called infringement. However, it is a delicate matter to be of service and compassion, sensitivity, and an ability to empathize are helpful in avoiding the distortions of man-made intelligence and awareness. The area or arena called the social co societal complex is an arena in which there are no particular needs for care, for it is the prerogative honor, duty of those, in the particular planetary sphere, to act according to their free will for the attempted aid of the social complex. Thus you have two simple directives, awareness of the intelligent energy expressed in nature, 
awareness of the intelligent energy expressed in self to be shared when it seems appropriate by the entity with the social complex, and you have one infinitely subtle and various set of distortions of which you may be aware, that is, distortions with respect to self and other selves, not concerning free will, but concerning harmonious relationships and service to others, as other selves would most benefit. Question. As an entity in this density grows from childhood, he becomes more aware of his responsibilities. Is there an age below which an entity is not responsible for his actions, or is he responsible from the time of his birth? Ra. An entity incarnated upon the earth plane becomes conscious of self at a varying point in its time-space progress through the continuum. This may have a median, shall we say, of approximately fifteen of your months. Some entities become conscious of self at a period closer to incarnation, some at a period farther from this event. In all cases, responsibility becomes retroactive from that point backward in the continuum, so that distortions are to be understood by the entity and dissolved as the entity learns. Question. Then an entity four years old would be totally responsible for any actions that were against or inharmonious with the law of one. Is that correct? Ra, this is correct. It may be noted that it has been arranged by your social complex structure that the newer entities to incarnation are to be provided with guides of a physical mind-body-spirit complex, thus being able to learn quickly what is consonant with the law of one. Question. Who are these guides? Ra, these guides are what you call parents, teachers, and friends. Question. You stated yesterday that forgiveness is the eradicator of karma. I am assuming that balanced forgiveness for the full eradication of karma would require forgiveness not only of other selves, but also the forgiveness of self. Am I correct? Ra, you are correct. We will briefly expand upon this understanding in order to clarify. Forgiveness of other self is forgiveness of self. An understanding of this insists upon full forgiveness upon the conscious level of self and other self, for they are one. A full forgiveness is thus impossible without the inclusion of self. Question. Thank you. A most important point. You mentioned that there were a number of confederations. Do all serve the infinite creator in basically the same way? Or do some specialize in some particular types of service? Ra. All serve the one creator. There is nothing else to serve, for the creator is all that there is. It is impossible not to serve the creator. There are simply various distortions of this service. As in the confederation which works with your people, each confederation is a group of specialized individual social memory complexes, each doing that which it expresses to bring into manifestation. Question. Can you tell me how Yahweh communicated to earth's people? Ra. This is a somewhat complex question. The first communication is what you would call genetic. The second communication was the walking among your people to produce further genetic changes in consciousness. The third was a series of dialogues with chosen channels. Question. Can you tell me what these genetic changes were and how they were brought about? Ra. Some of these genetic changes were in the form similar to what you call the cloning process, thus entities incarnated in the image of the Yahweh entities. The second was a contact of nature you know as sexual, changing the mind-body-spirit complex through the natural means of the patterns of reproduction devised by the intelligent energy of your physical complex. Question. Can you tell me specifically what they did in this case? Ra, we have answered this question. Please restate for further information. Question. Can you tell me the difference between the sexual programming prior to Yahweh's intervention and after intervention? Ra, this is a question which we can only answer by stating that intervention by genetic means is the same no matter what the source of this change. Question. Can you tell me Yahweh's purpose in making the genetic sexual changes? Ra, the purpose 75,000 years ago, as you measure time, was of one purpose only, that to express in the mind-body complex those characteristics which would lead to further and more speedy development of the spiritual complex. Question. 
How did these characteristics go about leading to the more spiritual development? Ra, the characteristics which were encouraged included sensitivity of all the physical senses to sharpen the experience and the strengthening of the mind complex in order to promote the ability to analyze these experiences. Question. When did Yahweh act to perform the genetic changes? Ra. The Yahweh group worked with those of the planet you call Mars 75,000 years ago in what you would call the cloning process. There are differences, but they lie in the future of your time-space continuum, and we cannot break the free will law of confusion. The 2600 approximately time was the second time, we correct ourselves, 3600, approximately the time of attempts by those of the Orion group during this cultural complex. This was a series of encounters in which the ones called Anak were impregnated with the new genetic coding by your physical complex means so that the organisms would be larger and stronger. Question. Why did they want larger and stronger organisms? Ra. The ones of Yahweh were attempting to create an understanding of the Law of One by creating mind-body complexes capable of grasping the Law of One. The experiment was a decided failure from the view of the desired distortions due to the fact that rather than assimilating the Law of One, it was a great temptation to consider the so-called social complex or sub-complex elite or different and better than other selves, this one of the techniques of service to self. Question. Then the Orion group produced this larger body complex to create an elite so that the law of one could be applied in what we call the negative sense. Ra, this is incorrect. The entities of Yahweh were responsible for this procedure in isolated cases as experiments in combating the Orion group. However, the Orion group were able to use this distortion of mind-body complex to inculcate the thoughts of the elite rather than concentrations upon the learning teaching oneness. Question. Was Yahweh then of the Confederation? Ra. Yahweh was of the Confederation, but was mistaken in its attempt to aid. Question. Then Yahweh's communication did not help or create what Yahweh wished for them to create. Is this correct? Ra. The results of this interaction were quite mixed where the entities were of a vibrational sum characteristic which embraced oneness, the manipulation of Yahweh were very useful. Wherein the entities of free will had chosen a less positively oriented configuration of some total vibratory complex, those of the Orion group were able, for the first time, to make serious inroads upon the consciousness of the planetary complex. Question. Can you tell me specifically what allowed the most serious of these inroads to be made by their own group, Orion group? Ra. This will be the final full question. Specifically, those who are strong, intelligent, etc., have a temptation to feel different from those who are less intelligent and less strong. This is a distorted perception of oneness with other selves. It allowed the Orion group to form the concept of the holy war, as you may call it, this is a seriously distorted perception. There were many of these wars of a destructive nature. Question. Thank you very much. As you probably know, I will be working for the next three days, so we will possibly have another session tonight if you think it is possible. The next session after that would not be until four days from now. Do you believe another session tonight is possible? Ra, this instrument is somewhat weak. This is a distortion caused by lack of vital energy. Thus, nurturing the instrument and physical balancing would allow another session, do you understand? Question, not completely. What specifically shall we do for physical balancing? Ra. 1. Take care with the fo foodstuffs. 2. Manipulate the physical complex to alleviate the distortion toward pain. 3. Encourage a certain amount of what you would call your exercise. The final injunction to take special care with the alignment this second session so that the entity may gain as much aid as possible from the various symbols. We suggest you check these symbols most carefully. This entity is slightly misplaced from the proper configuration. Not important at this time. More important when a second session is to be scheduled. I leave you in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one creator, Adonai. Session 19. 
February 8, 1981. I am Ra. I greet you in the love and light of the infinite creator we communicate now. Question. We are concerned in this communication with the evolution of mind, body, and spirit. It seems to me that a good place to start would be the transition from the second to the third density, then to investigate in detail the evolution of third density entities on Earth, paying particular attention to the mechanisms which help or hinder that evolution. Do all entities make a transition from second to third entity, or are there some entities who have never gone through this transition? Ra, your question presumes the space-time continuum understanding of the intelligent energy which animates your illusions. Within the context of this illusion, we may say that there are some that do not transfer from one particular density to another, for the continuum is finite. In the understanding which we have of the universe or creation as one infinite being, its heart beating as alive in its own intelligent energy, it merely is one beat of the heart of this intelligent from creation to creation. In this context, each and every entity of consciousness has, is, will, experience, experiencing, experience each and every density. Question. Let's take the point in which an individualized entity of second density is ready for transition to third. Is this second density being what we would call an animal? Ra. There are three types of second density entities which become, shall we say, inspirited. The first is the animal. This is the most predominant. The second is the vegetable, most especially what you would call sound vibration complex tree. These entities are capable of giving and receiving enough love to become individualized. The third is mineral. Occasionally a certain location, place, as you may call it, becomes energized to individuality through the love it receives and gives in relationship to a third density entity which is in relationship to it. This is the least common transition. Question. When this transition from second to third density takes place, how does the entity, whether it be animal, vegetable, tree, or mineral, become inspirited? Ra. Entities do not become inspirited. They become aware of the intelligent energy within each portion, cell or atom, as you may call it, of its beingness. This awareness is that which is awareness of that already given. From the infinite comes all densities. The self-awareness comes from within, given the catalyst of certain experiences understanding, as we may call this particular energy, the upward spiraling of the cell or atom or consciousness. You may then see that there is an inevitable pull toward the, what you may call, eventual realization of self. Question. Then after the transition into the third density, am I correct in assuming, we'll take Earth as an example, the entities would then look like us. They would be in human form. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct, taking your planetary sphere as an example. Question. When the first second density entities became third density on this planet, was this with the help of a transfer of beings from Mars? Or were there second density beings who transferred into third density with no outside influence? Ra, there were some second density entities which made the graduation into third density with no outside stimulus, but only the efficient use of experience. Others of your planetary second density joined the third density cycle due to harvesting efforts by the same sort of sending of vibratory aid as those of the Confederation send you now. This communication was, however, telepathic rather than telepathic vocal or telepathic written due to the nature of second density being. Question. Who sent the aid to the second density being? Ra. We call ourselves the Confederation of Planets in the service of the Infinite Creator. This is a simplification in order to ease the difficulty of understanding among your people. We hesitate to use the term sound vibration understanding, but it is closest to our meaning. Question. Then did this second density to third density transition take place 75,000 years ago, approximately? Ra, this is correct. Question. Where did the second density beings get physical vehicles of third density type to incarnate into? Ra, there were among those upon this second density plane 
those forms which, when exposed to third density vibrations, became the third density, as you would call the sound vibration human entities. That is, there was loss of body hair, as you would call it, the clothing of the body to protect it, the changing of the structure of the neck, jaw, and forehead in order to allow the easier vocalization and the larger cranial development characteristic of third density needs. This was a normal transfiguration. Question. Over how long a period of time was this transfiguration? It must have been very short. Ra, the assumption is correct, in our terms at least, within a generation and a half, as you know these things. Those who had been harvested of this planet were able to use a newly created physical complex of chemical elements suitable for third density lessons. Question. Can you tell me how this newly created physical complex was suited to third density lessons and what those lessons were? Ra, there is one necessity for third density. That necessity is self-awareness or self-consciousness. In order to be capable of such, this chemical complex of body must be capable of abstract thought. Thus, the fundamental necessity is the combination of rational and intuitive thinking. This was transitory in the second density form, operating largely upon intuition, which proved through practice to yield results. The third density mind was capable of processing information in such a way as to think abstractly, in that which you could term useless ways, in the sense of survival. This is a primary requisite. There are other important ingredients, the necessity for a weaker physical vehicle to encourage the use of the mind the development of the already present awareness of the social complex. These are also being necessary that for the development of physical dexterity in the sense of the hand, as you call this portion of your body complex. Question. This seems to be a carefully planned or engineered stage of development. Can you tell me anything of the origin of this plan or its development? Ra. We go back to previous information. Consider and remember the discussion of the Logos, with the primal distortion of free will, each galaxy developed its own logos. This logos has complete free will in determining the path of intelligent energy, which promote the lessons of each of the densities given the conditions of the planetary spheres and the sun body. Question. I will make a statement then of my own understanding and ask you if I am correct. There is a, what I would call, physical catalyst operating at all times upon the entities in third density. I assume this operation approximates the same way in the second density. It is a catalyst which acts through what we call pain and emotion. It is the primary reason for the weakening of the physical body and the elimination of body hair, etc., so that this catalyst would act more strongly upon the mind and therefore create the evolutionary process. Ra. This is not entirely correct, although closely associated with the distortion of your understanding. Consider, if you will, the tree, for instance. It is self-sufficient. Consider, if you will, the third density entity. It is self-sufficient only through difficulty and deprivation. It is difficult to learn alone, for there is a built-in handicap, at once the great virtue and the great handicap of third density, that is the rational, intuitive mind. Thus, the weakening of the physical vehicle, as you call it, was designed to distort entities towards a predisposition to deal with each other. Thus, the lessons which approach a knowing of love can be begun. This catalyst, then, is shared between people as an important part of each self's development, as well as the experiences of the self in solitude and the synthesis of all experience through meditation. The quickest way to learn is to deal with other selves, this is a much greater catalyst than dealing with the self. Dealing with the self without other selves is akin to living without what you would call mirrors. Thus, the self cannot see the fruits of its beingness. Thus, each may aid each by reflection. This is also a primary reason for the weakening of the physical vehicle, as you call the physical complex. Question. Then we have second-density beings who have primarily motivation towards self and possibly a little motivation towards service to others with respect to their immediate family, going into third density and carrying this bias with them, but being in a position now where their bias will slowly be modified to one which is aimed toward a social complex 
and ultimately towards union with the All. Am I correct? Ra, you are correct. Question. Then the newest third density beings, who have just made the transition from second, are still strongly biased towards self-service. There must be many other mechanisms to create an awareness of the possibility of service to others. I am wondering, first about the mechanism, and I am wondering when the split takes place, where the entity is able to continue on the road to service to self that will eventually take him on to fourth density. I am assuming that an entity can start, say, in second density, with service to self, and continue right on through and just stay on what we would call the path of service to self and never be pulled over, is this correct? Ra, this is incorrect. The second density concept of serving self includes the serving of those associated with tribe or pack. This is not seen in second density as separation of self and other self. All is seen as self, since in some form of second density entities, if the tribe or pack becomes weakened, so does the entity within the tribe or pack. The new or initial third density has this innocent, shall we say, bias or distortion towards viewing those in family, the society, as you would call perhaps, country as self. Thus, though a distortion not helpful for progress in third density, it is without polarity. The break becomes apparent when the entity perceives other selves as other selves, and consciously determines to manipulate other selves for the benefit of the self. This is the beginning of the road of which you speak. Question. Then, through free will, sometime within the third density experience, the path splits and the entity consciously chooses, or he probably doesn't consciously choose. Does the entity consciously choose this path of the initial splitting point? Ra, we speak in generalities, which is dangerous for always inaccurate. However, we realize you look for the overview. So we will eliminate anomalies and speak of majorities. The majority of third density beings is far along the chosen path before realization of that path is conscious. Question, can you tell me what bias creates the momentum towards the chosen path of service to self? Ra, we can speak only in metaphor. Some love the light, some love the darkness. It is a matter of the unique and infinitely various creator choosing and playing among its experiences as a child upon a picnic. Some enjoy the picnic and find the sun beautiful, the food delicious, the games refreshing and glow with the joy of creation. Some find the night delicious, their picnic being pain, difficulty, suffering of others, and the examination of the perversities of nature. These enjoy a different picnic. All these experiences are available. It is the free will of each entity which chooses the form to play, the form of pleasure. Question. I assume that an entity of either path can decide to change path at any time and possibly retrace steps, the path changing being more difficult the farther along the path the change is made. Is this correct? Ra, this is incorrect. The further an entity has, what you would call polarized, the more easily this entity may change polarity. For the more power and awareness the entity will have. Those truly helpless are those who have not consciously chosen, but who repeat patterns without knowledge of the repetition or the meaning of the pattern. Question. I believe we have a very important point here. It then seems that there is an extreme potential in this polarization, the same as there is in electricity. We have a positive and negative pole. The more you build the charge of either of these, the more the potential difference and the greater the ability to do work, as we call it in the physical. This would seem to me to be the same analogy that we have in consciousness. Is this correct? Ra, this is precisely correct. Question. Then would it seem that there is a relationship between what we perceive as a physical phenomena, say the electrical phenomena, and the phenomena of consciousness in that they, having stemmed from the one creator, are practically identical, but have different actions. Is this correct? Ra, again we oversimplify to answer your query. The physical complex alone is created of many, many energy or electromagnetic fields interacting due to intelligent energy. The mental configuration or distortions of each complex, further adding fields of electromagnetic energy and distorting the physical complex patterns of energy the spiritual aspect serving as a further complexity of fields, which is of itself perfect, 
but which can be realized in many distorted and unintegrated ways by the mind and body complex of energy fields. Thus, instead of one, shall we say, magnet with one polarity, you have in the body-mind-spirit complex one basic polarity expressed in what you would call violet ray energy, the sum of the energy fields, but which is affected by thoughts of all kinds generated by the mind complex, by distortions of the body complex, and by the numerous relationships between the microcosm, which is the entity, and the macrocosm in many forms, which you may represent by viewing the stars as you call them each with a contributing energy ray which enters the electromagnetic web of entity due to its individual distortion. Question. Is this then the root of what we call astrology? Ra, this will be the last full question of the session. The root of astrology as you speak it is one way of perceiving the primal distortions which may be predicted along probability, possibility lines given, shall we say cosmic orientations and configurations at the time of the entrance into the physical mental complex of the spirit and at the time of the physical mental spiritual complex into the illusion this then has the possibility of suggesting basic areas of distortion there is no more than this the part astrology plays is likened unto that of one root among many question is there anything we can do to make the instrument more comfortable Ra, this instrument is well aligned you are being very conscientious. We request you take more care in being assured that this instrument is wearing footwear of what you would call vibratory sound complex shoes. I am Ra. I leave you in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one creator, Adonai.